Hello, hello everybody. This is Atene Sharp Rally and we're going to present today uh, something which a lot of people have been asking me every time we finish winning a case on an H1B uh, and if people have to do a consular processing they are asking questions what they should bring to the US consulate and uh, what is going to be helpful to them there. I'm going to cover the basic uh, of uh, what you need to bring on this slide share we have posted actually on slideshare.com.net and hopefully it will be helpful to all those who are going to go for H1B stamping, L1 and now uh, other employment visas but here we're talking about H1 and L1 only but you can also use it for O visas and some other visas too. First of all, um, it is presented, of course, by the Sharperai Law Group, and you can see our website there and also our phone number 510-742-5887. And anything I'm going to present to you is for educational purposes only. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. The number to this office is 510-742-5887. Let us start. Um, of course, these are things to bring at the U.S. consulate, and this list is pretty much um, it's just limited to that list. But these are the basic things. But as we go on the slides, I am going to talk a little bit about about uh, the issues um, that uh, uh, that we have to do. Um, the issues that you can will be presented presented to you when you go to the to the uh, consulate. Uh, interviews and uh, sometimes it can be very stressful so I will try to make it as easy as possible for all those who are going for this uh, visa stamping. Um, so first you have to have a valid passport and uh, make sure the passport have at least six months uh, it's more than six months valid in terms of uh, to get the visa otherwise they will not give it to you. We recommend that you go for longer time than six months the reason for that if you have only six months then at the airport when you come they will give you an i-94 if your visa uh, gets approved you get a stamping and at the when you come at the airport the i-94 will be limited only to the time on the passport very very important you need to make sure you have a passport which is longer than six months but the best is to have two three years on it because usually for h1b they give you for three years so you might want to have that now the next question, um, next thing, bring all your passports. Um, many people have expired passports or if you have lost your passport, bring a police report uh, to explain uh, the passport was lost. Very important also because they look at this passport to see if you have ever been deported or you never have any issues. So it's very important you bring all, all of them. Now bring photographs. One photograph is usually required. And the specification is usually when you will fill the form on the on the State Department website. Uh, this is, uh, but we advise people to bring two or three of them just in case uh, the photograph gets lost or something. Um, the DS-160 confirmation. Whenever you are filing for the H-1B, uh, after you get the approval of the 797, this is the form that you fill on the State Department website for the U.S. consulate, and that's what actually. Uh, you will be using to apply for your visa stamp. Uh, of course, bring a copy of your fee payment because this is done online now. After you pay, there will be a receipt issued to you. Usually, see, uh, you can print it from your screen, so bring a copy of that. And appointment letter, of course, this will also be issued to you. So bring that with you and, and make sure... I put this note here because sometimes people forget Keep a copy of everything you're submitting. Make sure you have two copies and tick quickly whatever you submitted. For example, if they ask you for a copy of your birth certificate, which usually they don't ask, but if they do, you keep a copy and you and you in on the side so that you know you submitted that. And then original 797 approval. Whenever you file for your H1B or L1, this is filed first with the Department of Homeland Security, which is also known as the USCIS. And this is with this approval that you go and get your stamping. And you need to bring the original usually, but a copy also will do. Uh, most of the time it's better to bring uh, the, the original. Employment letter. The current employment letter, although you have a copy of the petitioner's letter, 
the letter should the em current employment letter will best will just confirm that the job is still available for you and uh, the date of the employment the length of employment job duties and the salary offered also as a point put a phone number who they can contact because oftentimes um, they might contact the employer by phone from the US consulate or even at the port of entry at the airport so make sure you have someone who's going to be able, be able to pick up the phone at that time if possible then a copy of the L1 or H1 application that sometimes you will not get that your employer will not want to give you that but if you have it it will be very helpful the whole package usually if you're doing the interview like in India they have a system where this is comes a, an, an electronic file but just to be on the safe side like we had cases from Singapore where they asked for a copy of that so it's good to have it and if the employer wants to redact some information for example the tax return you can ask them to do that and put a page that they remove that police clearance this is not required because you're going to be doing a fingerprint but um, if you have ever been arrested for any criminal issues you cannot lie on the application so bring all the copies of the disposition of the court for example the court decided that you you paid your sentence your punishment was done etc so you need to bring a copy of that if you have it with you and of course the, the last but not the least do not lie or misrepresent on the on the applications oftentimes by mistake people will tick the wrong bus, box it will be considered as, misrepre as misrepresentation we had an issue where someone ticked the wrong box because he didn't understand the, the question and at a later stage they charge him on the 21261 which basically says uh, it's the fraud and misrepresentation section and that can be very very help, uh, hurtful to you so basically what I've presented to you right now ladies and gentlemen is just uh, if the basics of, of, of the question uh, of what you need to bring with you now at the US consulate there will be a bunch of questions probably asked with you they will ask you about how sometimes if the company is not a solid company not well known they will ask you questions such as how do you know about this company who referred you there how did you apply and uh, do they really have work for you where will you be living where will you be staying and how are you going to enter and which port of entry you are entering for example your company is in uh, California and you're entering in Chicago they might question you why you're entering from there so all those questions are very important you should be ready for them unfortunately you cannot get a list of every questions out there but anything goes and one of the rule of term that we tell people anything you say can be used against you so give the answers precisely don't go there and, and, and add on your answer or subtract so keep it real keep it simple and hopefully you will get your visa good luck to all of you and anything I told you today is for educational purposes only you should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided you should contact an attorney if you have any questions the number to our office 510 7425887 visit us at pralilo.com